guys! I just finished reading The Twilight Zone Companion, 2nd edition, by Mark Scott Zykri, which has been on my radar for quite some time as something that I thought would be fun to check out. For whatever reason, when I have looked this book up in the past, I never really paid attention to what kind of book it is, what size book. Um, so I was under the impression that it was going to be like a coffee table book. 12 by 12, uh, heavy duty, glossy pages with a lot of photographs. It's not. It is not coffee table size. It's wider than um, I expected. And it does have pictures, but it's, it's mostly text, which is fine. Um, I do know how to read, but it's just not what I expected. It's probably better than what I was expecting, to be honest. Zykri's heavily researched book covers the show from its earliest germination as Rod Serling's brainchild, to its quick rise in popularity, to its eventual cancellation after five seasons, with a bonus section at the end talking about the show's resurgence in later years. The book is packed with fascinating information about the development and production of the show, as well as stories about the writers, the directors, the actors, legal issues, difficulties with the network and the sponsors, um, as well as explanations of things like why six episodes were filmed on videotape as opposed to film, why season four has hour-long episodes as opposed to half-hour-long episodes, and why the show couldn't go on forever. Zykri also takes the time and spends the bulk of the book shining a spotlight on each of the 156 episodes with cast and crew info, Serling's opening and closing monologues, a summary of the plot of each episode, and a commentary, including occasional quotes from those who worked on it and Zykri's own critique of the episode's strengths and or weaknesses. The really good news is that I learned a lot and came to appreciate the show even more. The behind-the-scenes stories are great. I loved learning about all the different personalities involved in making the show, including writer Charles Beaumont, whose tragic personal story I found especially moving, and the reveals of things like how a certain effect was achieved, how a sequence was filmed, what went into casting decisions are incredibly interesting, so if you're a fan of the show, there's a lot you can get out of this. The bad news about all that is that there's so much information and there's no way I'm ever going to be able to remember it all. This is one of those times when I wish I had a photographic memory or something where I could just remember everything I read so that then whenever I watch an episode, I could just recall what I had read. I did feel like there were a few times when Zykri's commentary and personal biases became slightly obtrusive. In a book titled The Twilight Zone Companion, I wasn't really looking for one man's critique of the show, I was expecting something more objective than that, and it is objective for the most part, but not entirely. His subjectivity was most obvious when he would write off an episode in a few lines or be particularly dismissive of its lack of logic, and I'd be like, but I liked that episode. Another minor difficulty was the fact that I still haven't watched the entire show, so deciding how to read the sections on episodes that I haven't seen yet was a bit of a pickle. Do I just go ahead and read the plot summary, which gives away the twist, and trust that my pathetic memory won't retain it, so that whenever I do get around to watching the episode, I won't remember and it'll be like new? Or do I skip the summary, but read the behind-the-scenes info, which is what I really want, and hope for the best? I'd say I ended up going with both options, about 50-50, and I guess it's worked out. Um, I've already forgotten a lot of what I read anyway, so... I probably haven't been permanently spoiled. Reading this book did inspire me to put together a spreadsheet of all the episodes. At first I was going to put a star next to the ones that I wanted to see, which was really the entire point in making the spreadsheet, 
but I quickly realized that that was superfluous because pretty much every single one was going to end up with a star next to it, including the ones that I have seen that in light of new info that I learned from this book, which I may or may not remember, I would want to revisit. Basically, this book makes you want to watch The Twilight Zone, all five seasons in their entirety, including the bad episodes, which even at their worst are still better than most things you find on television then and now. I have been very flattered to receive a couple requests for a favorite Twilight Zone episodes video, and I'd love to do that, but here's the thing. First, until I've seen all the episodes, I don't want to make a top 10 or top 20 or top whatever list in case one comes along that I see and I say, this is my favorite episode, I had no idea, now my list is wrong. Second, I'm so stinking indecisive, I don't know how I'd ever be able to choose which ones to put on the list and which ones to leave off. And there are some that I've seen many times that are among the best episodes of the entire show, but are they my favorites? Uh, I don't know. So I don't know if or when that will happen, but I did do a video on The Twilight Zone a couple years ago titled Why I Love The Twilight Zone, which is better than nothing, so if you want, you can go check that out. This Thursday is the 4th of July, which for some people, among other things, means Twilight Zone Marathon. Sci-Fi has again made the decision to do something else that day. I'll cut them a little slack. They still do the New Year's Twilight Zone Marathon, and they do air a couple episodes every day. But the Decades Network, which picked up the slack last year, will again be running their Rod White and Blue Twilight Zone Marathon. Unfortunately, our cable company dropped the Decades Network, so if we want to watch some Twilight Zone, we'll have to seek it out ourselves, but maybe you'll have better luck, and the show is available on various streaming services. Anyway, I would recommend the book for casual fans and diehard fans alike. Just be aware, there's a lot of information here, a lot to take in. I hope you enjoyed this quick book review, and hey, what are some of your favorite Twilight Zone episodes? To my fellow Americans, have a great Independence Day, and to everyone else, happy Thursday! I'll see you again later this week. Thanks for watching!